What's good, y'all? I am Slime Your Beats, and in this video, you will learn all about mixing and mastering. So, I recently did do a poll about what you what tutorials you guys want to watch. That's how we picked this one, uh, mixing and mastering. So, we're going to cover that topic, and then also to answer this uh, poll. So, fun fact: the correct answer to this one is actually one channel, and pretty much everyone got it wrong. <laughs> so, um. Yeah, before this channel was Slime Green Beats, it was called One Channel. That is a true story. But let's get back to mixing and mastering. So in this video, we're going to learn all about mixing and mastering. And um, we're going to learn what is mixing and mastering. So this is kind of for beginners, but um, you know, also any intermediate people can pick things up. Mix what is mixing and mastering? Why it is important? We're going to learn about the 0.3 dB rule. We're going to learn about leveling sounds and then hardware. So let me tackle hardware first, and then we'll get into, actually, what is mixing and mastering? We'll do that first, and then hardware. So what is mixing and mastering? Basically, mixing and mastering is just like leveling sounds and adding effects to make the overall beat sound better. So we have the patterns here. This is important. The other half is basically the mixing and the mastering. Making the drums, making the melody sound good. Uh, and we're talking about beats, so we're not gonna cover vocals in this video. But yeah, making the drums sound good, making the melody sound good. That's essentially what mixing and mastering is. Um, and why it's important. You know, when I first started making beats, I thought it was all about the patterns. But mixing and mastering, like, if you can just enhance every sound of your beat, your overall, your beats are going to sound better. And I'm going to show you guys kind of like my A-B testing theory too, which uh, is like something I took from another career path and brought into this. But basically, yeah, um, mixing and mastering is, and I, I wish Stunner was here, the other guy at the channel. I wish Stunner was here to like talk about why it's important. But basically, you can have like an average, really good patterns, mix master poorly, and beats ruin. Or you can have the opposite. So like learning, knowing, knowing how to mix and master is very, very, very important. And again, it just brings up the sound that you already have, or it can also hurt the sound. The work that you put in with the patterns so it's just it's just a very important part of beat making um and let's just get right to oh yeah hardware sorry hardware um so hardware when it comes to mixing and mastering i suggest you just get, just get some good headphones these are the uh audio technica m50x's uh, i believe it's ath dash m50x i believe it's like i'm literally reading it but um yeah so these are really good mixing headphones. They're very high quality and they're not that expensive. They're like a hundred some dollars, um, which, you know, uh, so, but uh, you know, I've had these for like two years almost. So they, they're great headphones and they're very high quality and you'll never look at music the same. Basically you will never look at music the same way after you use these headphones. But, um, yeah, definitely get you some good headphones. And what I also do is I try to like test at least two, three types of sounds. So like not only will I mix, just through my headphones i also mix like listening through computer speakers and sometimes i'll try to listen to like real other real better speakers it's because you want to make sure that your sound sounds good across multiple devices and that's just one of the things in 2022 that's just a reality people listen on their phone people listen on the computer speakers people listen on headphones people listen in their car so you can try to mix and master in all these places sometimes i'll take my computer in the car and mix master you know just to hear how it sounds on the car speakers so that's something you can definitely do and that's that's mixing and mastering in a nutshell so just it, one of the things is, yeah, just work with what you have. If you don't have a ton of technology and whatnot, just work with what you have. At least play it through your computer speakers. At least put some headphones on. Like, just do what you can. So let's get to the actual what it mixing and mastering part. And I'll go ahead and just start playing this beat. We'll just go sound by sound. So mastering is the mixing in the master channel. Usually in the master channel for me, and you might master a totally different way, but for me, I don't do too much in the master channel unless I absolutely have to. So if... If, uh, if I feel like the sounds are just like too strong, I'll put like a limiter on it. But usually, honestly, I don't do much in the master channel. But one thing I probably need to do for this beat actually is, cause you see it's, it's actually over the 0.3 dB limit. So what I would do with this is I would turn the limiter on and often turning the limiter on will just fix it like right off the bat. And when it's over 0.3 dB, you want it to be in the negatives dBs. You can see the dB up here so when it's over point, when it's over 
what's in the positives essentially it can clip and it usually does clip and you can hear and it sounds horrible so that's the thing uh, you don't want it to ever clip so you want it to be below 0.3 db and we say 0.3 because if it's a zero it still might peak over just a tad so you always want it at least 0.3 db so what you can easily do is a, you can just put the limiter on, that'll fix it most of the time. But what I'll do is I'll take the gain back to 0.3 dB, and I'll take the ceiling back down to 0.3 dB. Now we're, just like that, we're out of the clip zone. So negative 0.3 dB, negative 0.3 dB. That's kind of like the safe zone right there. All right, now let's move on to the melody. This is more mixing, this is mastering. So mastering, is all mastering is this and this. It's just a master channel, but it's also the most important channel. So melody, and watch my other mastering video. I'll go more in depth on mastering, but melodies, um, melodies are, ooh, my philosophy with melodies is just to let it fly. I usually don't even try to mix melodies, but what you can do is cut off parts so you can hear other parts better. So like I might cut this off so I can hear the bass a little bit more, but that's not really what I want to do with this track. So melody, so the thing with mixing is also like use your eyes and your ears. So like, I'll always go like this. I'll be like, all right, does this sound better or worse? I'll be like, which one do I like more? With it on, with it off. Honestly, that might actually improve the mix. So there you go. That's mixing. I'll be like, is that a better sound? So I'm basically leaving room for the bass. So you'll see like the bass would be here. So you see sub bass, bass, low mid. Bass sound would be here. They should be here. So you see how the melody would like be interfering with that area if I didn't like cut this part off. So basically I'm just leaving room for the bass so that so the sounds don't overlap. And when the sounds overlap, that's when they sound which, which you would call muddy and they sound bad. So that's melodies. And then, you know, mixing is also using effects. So like gross beats. You know that's like mixing um, and then using like reverb that's also mixing so I have reverb on here and reverb is pretty standard with uh, melodies that's all I'm gonna say about that if you guys want more details on that I'll, I'll like just let me know I'll do like a separate video where I just break down how to mix melodies I'll probably do that anyways actually that's a pretty good idea uh, 808s bases Basically with basses, the idea is you want to cut the high end out if, if that's what you want to do. And again, mixing is just comes down to what you want to do and what you like in your sound. So there's really no specific way that you have to mix. You don't have to mix any kind of way. So uh, that's that's the biggest thing with mixing. Um, and then again, A-B test. Like, does this sound better with it or without it? That's why you need some good headphones, really. And I'll be like... So what you would do is watch, if it's just like this, you would turn it down. So what I do is like, I like to cut out the, uh, the low end or the high end. It's my alarm. Hold on, time out. So with the bass, you can also, same thing, effects. So you could throw in effects, uh, like the pretty fast distortion, you know, and that'll distort things. That's mixing, mixing is anything in the mixer. So that's mixing. So mixing is just like really effects and then like leveling tools in the mixer. And then Fruity Pair Mix EQ2 is pretty standard. Um, you're just gonna like cut out, basically, the, a good way to look at it is actually this, like you're just gonna cut out parts that like visually kind of shouldn't be here. Like see the bass, like probably doesn't need like all this like over here interfering with the other sounds. So yeah, what you would do is just kind of cut that part out. So you just want like a slightly cleaner sound. That's like mixing. It's the same thing with the melody. See, like, does the melody necessarily need to be in this bass portion? So I'm gonna cut a little bit of that out to leave room for the bass. And that's that's one way to mix. And again, like, don't take anybody's mixing advice too seriously because like I said, it just comes down to what you wanna do with mixing. But that's like pretty standard like rules, I would say, like logic. Same thing with the hi-hats. You know, the hi-hats are gonna be high, so you don't want them really low. So let's, let's hear these hi-hats. So like, yeah, I'd probably cut it off there. Just so it's like not bleeding over and all into this area. Like we don't need the hi-hats all over there. One thing cool with hi-hats too is like, just try adding 
putting reverb on hi hats. Let's, let's hear without it, and then hear with it. Makes a big difference. Golly, I should have picked a beat with like more drums. <laughs> yeah, hi reverb on hi hats can really make hi hats like dope. Um, snares, snares are pretty much the same as hi hats. They're so high end, but every snare is different again. So that's why you want to be audio not visual all the time but what's cool about fl is like uh before fl you know you would have to mix these all audio but with fl you can kind of see what's going on too so like see how it's just like all in the bass too so i'm like okay let me cut it off but see like a normal snare would kind of be like this which doesn't really sound right it doesn't even have like the real sound sound of the normal snare that i picked so you kind of want it to sound like the normal snare that you picked unless you want to add per unless you want to specifically add reverb and stuff like that so that's the thing with the with the parametric eq2 you want to touch up the sound but you don't want to like totally ruin the sound or make it sound really different from what you picked that's that's what i feel like is one of the biggest keys and kicks same thing I'm just gonna cut out kicks to be uh Sometimes I also just sometimes have like a let it fly mentality where I'm like, all right. See, that's like a totally different kick, even though I'm cutting off like a lot. So I'm like, all right. We probably could cut off that much. So again, that's just like adjusting and then using your ears. Like what sounds better? Like, does it sound better here? Does it sound better here? Does it sound better here? That's, that's really all it is like. So every sound is different, that's the thing. I think originally I was like, this kick is takes up so much space, which is unusual, very unusual actually, that I was like, okay, I don't wanna mess with the sound too much. Cause then it's like, ends up being that sound that you didn't pick. But again, if that's what you wanna do, that's what you can do. So again, you know, just mix how you want to. But like definitely try to mix that's like half of it like if you're not trying to mix <laughs> odds are you're not mixing very well and you're probably not going to mix perfectly the very first time you mix but like um you know it's just like you probably didn't make the greatest pattern the very first time you made a pattern you just got to keep practicing and like see what you like see what you don't like etc that's pretty much that and we're also going to talk about leveling at some point in this video that's pretty much that for like the effects and kind of portion of it so leveling, yeah, like, you know, listen and like, does the sound stick out? If so, turn it down. Usually that's hi-hats. <laughs> hi-hats often like, but it, if that's what you like, you know, again, if you like hi-hats taking over the whole beat, go for it. Uh, but usually like, you don't want any one sound sticking out too much. And that's that can make a beat sound really weird. So um, try not to do that, I would say. Try not to have one sound just stick out way too much. Unless that's what you want to purposely do. Uh, but in general, try not to have that happen. And again, you can use leveling tools. You can also just see like in the limiter. It, well, okay. You can see like what's sticking out here. Like just by looking at like the, these, this part right here, like the yellow, whatever you call this color, green-ish color looking thing. It's teal looking. You can see like the kick is so much bigger than these other sounds. So I could take this and be like, this would probably produce like a better overall sound, but I like the kick being all bouncy and whatnot. So I'd probably bring that right back up. I kind of like the kick hitting hard. But again, like even if you like kicks hitting hard, sometimes if it's too much, it's gonna ruin the sound. So like, you just gotta be very aware of that, um, the level of the sounds. And again, you don't want sounds peeking out too much. It ends up sounding weird. That's pretty much that. And then let me also just cover as a basic, like the best way to level sounds, the best way to actually adjust volume is, now this is the easiest way to adjust volume. You can just turn it down here and it works, but the proper way to do it is actually in the actual VST or in the channel rack. So you so you should turn down the, say for, for instance, we're talking about the drums. We should turn down the drums here, turn down the volume here. And if we're talking a melody VST, you want to turn down the volume in the actual VST. So that's the proper way to turn down the volume of an individual sound. This is kind of like a more aggregate way of doing it. So if I have like multiple kicks in it in the mixer channel, I could just, and I have them in the same mixer channel, I could just easily turn down here. What's cool is it also shows like the dBs here. 
that's nice um that's really cool actually and uh yeah and then also you know you can do stereo separation we're not going to cover that in this video there's there's other things you can do like side chaining uh which i don't really do but oh uh, yeah uh that's it for this video guys um mixing and mastering in a nutshell how to mix and master beats let me know if you guys want me to hone in on a specific part or if you have questions or or whatever you guys are thinking just let me know um try to make another video about this but that's it for this video guys thank you guys for watching signing beats in the building peace out